This is the Stepping Razor, the art of war. We're there with you. You're listening to the Gladiators featuring Drew Lion. We celebrate Peter Tosh. And you know that there's function going on at the museum, the Peter Tosh Museum from Trafalgar Road. So we'll be having some connection there occasionally. And then we have the regular things to deal with. We want to start off with a with a, a beautiful story today. Yes, very nice story. So we soon come forward. Raise up. We still have a beautiful little story. Huh? But before we go to the beautiful story, it seems as if we have forgotten this this link up. You know, they're having the the Peter Touch tribute. Well the concert is on Saturday, but they're having some the museum is open today and we have um, DJ Amber outside there eh, and, and Smurf and all the good people them from Zip and IRFM out there. But them ready for me? Um, I can't go to the good beautiful story. Well, go, them not ready for me. All right. So here we are saying so now because, you know, we just celebrate. There's something... In all the madness we are going, there's certain things that is beautiful. You can take out, you know, beautiful things can come out of uh, sad stories. But you know, the other day we celebrated the oldest living person on earth. That is what I'm saying, right? She was the oldest living person on earth, according to these people who do those things. And she was a Jamaican. She died just when the, the whole heap of excitement start over. She, she eventually died. But there's something about Jamaica that we need to really investigate. And is the longevity of people. Especially people from them time. We're not talking about us or no, because we're not going to know. But we can tell, predict from now, say, Young people right now, now nah, go live to see them age. We, we nah put no bad mouth on no young people, but 100 and over, I ain't not seen say you got to have people that live them age there, you know, 50 years time and 60 years time. But we have to celebrate the long life of these people. There is a woman in England that celebrated her 110th birthday and guess what she's a Jamaican can you believe that she's them say she's one of four in England and them say since she reached 100 every year she gets something from the Queen Cause you know the Queen got the 90 and the year old you know she may be 110 years old today, but Amy Johnson is still going strong, both in voice and personality. 110. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God and high. 110. <laughs> Amy lives in the tiny Cumbrian village of Shap with her daughter Doreen, who's a mere 87. She moved here from Jamaica in the 60s to help with her grandchildren. Who is it? That's you when you, when you came when you first came over. Hmm? That's Amy Johnson when she first came over from Jamaica. Amy's no stranger to cards from the Queen. She's had one every year since her 100th birthday. It's the Queen of England. Uh, saying happy birthday to you. God bless her. Amy now joins an elite group of so-called super centenarians, those who have reached the age of 110 or more. And there are thought to be only four of them here in the UK. Among her tips for a happy life, family, faith, and staying fit. Singing, walking, working, and of course... <coughs> The, the genes must have something, some contribution to make. <laughs> Indeed they must, and so must the laughter, of which, knowing Amy, there'll surely be lots, 
as she celebrates her special day with family and friends. Catherine Jacob, Five News, Cumbria. One hundred and ten year old and I laugh them, strong laugh them. Believe you me, me a sixty year old and but me still a laugh still. But them say laughter is a good powerhouse for people. Laughter, yeah, you can't as a girl play that screw up your face every day. Laughter and you can't hear the woman at one hundred and ten year old. She powerful laughing. So that's beautiful because. It's a Jamaican, and we have to celebrate that. Because as we say, we are the longest living woman on earth. And now we hear of another woman who reached 110. That means that she's not the oldest now, but she's getting there. She's getting there. Now, RFM now brings you a live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Tash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum, Paul's headquarters in Kingston. We have over there is DJ Amber and ZJ Smurf. Yo! Hey, what's up, Mota? Good afternoon. How you doing? Well, I can't. I, I can't go see you today. <laughs> me know. You hear me know. All right, mama. <laughs> All right, we're in Kingston. We're coming to you live from the Peter Tosh Museum. We're at Pulse headquarters, and it's a very exciting afternoon here as they get ready for the Peter Tosh Music Festival. So we want to invite all our listeners in earshot right now, wherever you are in Kingston, and you can come on over, especially like maybe after work, you know, maybe having a late lunch, come on over, see what we're up to, because Saturday is a very exciting day at this very address. But I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to let the person who is in charge tell you all about it. I have with me Mr. Kingsley Cooper, chairman of Pulse and executive producer of the Peter Tosh Music Festival. Good afternoon, Mr. Cooper. Lovely to see you. Wonderful to see you, Amber. All right. So tell us a little about what's going to be happening here today leading up to Saturday. Well, first of all, you are happening here. Um, we have Ira in the house. We have you in the house. And, um, you know, we have special arrangements here for the museum. If you, between today and Saturday, you know, the public is invited to come to the museum and you can get um, admission for half price. What? You're doing half price from today to Saturday? Absolutely, because we're, that is part of the whole celebrations of Peter's birthday and part of the music festival. So that's number one. Number two, we are enjoying Peter, Peter Tosh vibes. You know, we have music from Peter. Um, uh, we have celebrities coming to the museum and we're going to be talking to you as well. Um, and we even have some school children from my alma mater, Kingston College, coming to the, to the museum and from Alpha and from, and from other institutions and just members of the public coming in. So it's, it's really something that we are looking forward to and we have started already and we are enjoying it. Um, tonight there's a special event uh, by invitation, but um, you know, of course, that's just a start. Today is just a start because then we're going to the symposium at UWI tomorrow evening, starting at 6. And then on Saturday, we have the big concert. And that, of course, ha features the reun reunification of um, Peter's original band, Word, Sound, and Power, with the likes of, you know, Santa Davis and, and, and um, um, uh, Keith Sterling and Steve Golden and Robbie Lynn and, you know, that, that original aggregation with backup singers, Pam Hall, Gemma's, um, people like Donald, uh, Donald Kinsey. Um, the great um, guitarist and, and, and you know all of them are super talented um, uh, musicians that they re actually represent the very best of reggae and then of course we have performances from Luciana and Queen Africa, Marcia Griffiths, um, uh, Freddie McGregor, um, Tony Rebel, Nadine Sutherland, Zach Starkey um, and Shush and, and um, um, Zach is probably going to pass by here later on. He's a rocker with the band The Who and Oasis, yes, and he, you know, is a big Peter Tosh fan, so he's performing. Um, and we have Big Jagger by a live, live link. Well, well, I shouldn't say live because it's recorded. Um, and, um, but, you know, he has a special message and a performance for the fans because he himself is a Peter Tosh fan and recorded a number of songs with Peter. Um, so, it, you know, it's exceptional. Kimani Mali, um, Ikea, Jesse Royal, you know, it's going to be amazing. You make it sound so normal, like, oh, it's just a, a night at Paul's on a Saturday. But really, it's pretty exciting with all these different acts coming. Are they going to be doing Peter's songs? Yes, we have a combination of them doing one or two of Peter's songs and also one or two of their own songs. So you get the best of both worlds. 
Sounds great. All right. So you said there's a symposium tomorrow um, and then the show on Saturday. We're going to get more into the details about the symposium later on. But for now, we're inviting people. I'm sitting right outside. The Irish truck is on the road, so you can't miss it. Right at the front of Pulse. Just come out. Tell them the exact address. And for people who don't know town, but they're just in town, how they get here. 388 Trafalgar Road, and it's right in, in front of the one park that's on Trafalgar Road, between Holborn Road and Ruthven Road. So you can't miss it. And as you said, the Irish truck is right here. You come from either the New Kingston end from Nutsford Boulevard, or you come from the Devon House end. But either way, you're gonna, we're just a stone's throw um, from either side of Trafalgar Road, Pulse Centre at 38 Not far from Crossroads, not far from Halfway Tree, not far from anywhere. Just come on over. And there's one other thing I want to add because on the Sunday, there's an excursion to Belmont, um, West Poland, which is Peter's resting place where his mausoleum is. And um, it's a beautiful place right by the sea. It's a wonderful experience. So that is something that we also want to do. All right. So we're going to remind people of all these different things in celebration of Peter Tosh's birthday. Thank you so much for the time. I know you're going to be very busy this evening. So we'll link up again later on. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have Irie in the house. And um, everybody, you're welcome. Come to the Peter Tosh Museum. Have a great experience. It's a wonderful thing to remember Peter and to, to share his legacy. And, um, you know, both for persons who are mature as well as young people who need to understand the foundation on which their freedom is built. All right. Thank you so much. That was Mr. Kingsley Cooper, chairman of Pulse and executive producer of the Peter Tosh Music Festival. And I'm going to check out the museum um, Muta, I've never been inside, so okay. it's gonna be my Come first on. time. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be my first time. All right, I'm sure. I'm sure. So All right, and we'll give you more three. details eh? after three. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, Muta. Yes, that was a live outside broadcast from the launch at the Peter Tash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum Pulse Headquarters in Kingston, and that was DJ Amber. So the we I go through some thinking now where I drive come along a watch here and three things jump out of the media. You know, this lady where use a machine and beat her child and it has become a national debate about this beating up this child. And this argument about reparation that we we seeking for reparation. You know, there are certain things that we never even check, even in the Bible, because Jamaica is supposed to be this Christian nation. And everybody tell me, say, the Bible is the word of God. And I don't think the word of God can change overnight, just so. I not supposed to change as a matter of fact. Now, the argument about disciplining children, you know what? Most Jamaicans, all right, I could, I could put it from the beginning. Most Jamaicans, the reason why them is against homosexuality is because them say it in the Bible. And God say you must stone, stone homosexuals to death. I don't hear the LGBT or whosoever lobby fe move that from the, the eyesight and the ears of children who read the Bible. Because if it is the word of God and it say, any man that lie with a man must be put on to death. And two now the, the farmer slaves stick to that. And then we hear the people them who give them the Bible say, look you know, we know that the Bible is you know, about here and now. we now work with that again. And that means you now we who is farmer slaves must now say, all right, that can't work in a civilized time. Yeah. Now if it can't work in a civilized time, yeah, it means say, and if that we were told is the word of God, even though it's Moses that said these things according to them. Then we should have really crossed out that out of the book. Because no one wants to stone people because of them sexual orientation, even though we hear artists get up and say it. And whole heap of people in Jamaica would do it. But we don't want to do that because we passed that level. So we have to tamper with the word of God. No. Next thing, this woman that beat the child with the machete. I don't know how much people know that in the Bible, in a Deuteronomy, it say that if a, if a child disobey their parent 
And the child is spoken to. And the child continues. He, that child must be taken in front of the elders of the city. And he and these elders must authorize the stoning of that child to death. For the disobedient child, the, the penalty of disobedient according to the Bible is death. Now, I ask Jamaican people who are listening to me, would you stone your child to death because of disobedience? Because I hear a man call me one night and sound like him would have do it. Yeah, a man call me one night and say, him say beat him picnic and her foot her and swell up. And when she goes to school, she can't write. You know, I should have played, you know, but and next time for that. But him says she, she, she can't write. And the teacher them send her home back. And when I say, brethren, they know that go, him say, oh, she them forget kick. I'm boxed down. And I say, right, it. No, I must say, I must say, gone back a time, you know. I'm too forward thinking for really figure say a man that do that to him picnic and feel good about it. Say, my discipline the picnic. The Bible says you must kill your picnic if the picnic is disobedient. That's how it says in a Deuteronomy. If a child gets disobedient and now hear what you say, and you talk to the child and the child still now hear what you say, you must carry it out of the city and stone them to death. No, I don't know who that would agree with that, right? Yes or no? The ma I don't think the majority of picnic would have, the majority of parents, they would have beat them picnic. Because we know say, if that woman did have beat her picnic and the machine chat the picnic, she'd have weep and wheel till she can't weep and wheel no more. So that is not in our thinking because that is the last judgment. So the Bible says you must stone it, stone your pity to death. Now, if you don't agree with that, I would think I said maybe you are really tamper with the word of God because I get I get brought up here so these things is the word of God. Killing women sexually is the word of God. You know, even if you wear a certain cloth together, you must be stoned to death. It's a weird thing. So, I don't know. I don't know how to see it. I don't know how to see it. Because I don't feel that the woman should, the picnic must be stoned to death. Oh, sorry. I think you said the Jews are going to read outside. Sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to come back to it. We're going to come back to the reasoning. It's news time. Sorry about Good afternoon. I am Patrice Walters with the local and international headlines. A man has pleaded guilty to murder and three counts of wounding with intent in the Home Circuit Court as part of sentence reduction day. Former employee Omar Graham was charged in relation to an attack on staff at Monkley's Patio Shop in St. Andrew in March. Allegations are that Graham, who was fired by the operators of the business, returned there on March 24 and attacked employees with a blunt object. Co-owner of the establishment, Barbara Moncrief, was beaten to death and three other employees were hospitalized with serious injuries. He is to be sentenced on December 15. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the National Housing Trust, NHT, is on track to deliver approximately 7,000 housing solutions for the 2017 calendar year. Mr. Holness, in his budget presentation in March this year, said the NHT would have commenced construction of more than 5,000 solutions and that completion of the works would have been done in more than 1,000 on more than 1,000 across eight parishes. He says NHT contributors in St. Andrew, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover, and St. James will benefit from the projected housing solutions valued at $28.6 billion. Mr. Holness also reiterates that the NHT is on track with its projected four-year target of starting some 15,000 housing solutions by 2020. In news overseas, a red bandana has become the new symbol of protest in Mogadishu, Somalia, as anger over the city's most destructive bomb attack is boiling over onto the streets. Men and women in the city, security officers, even government officials, are all wearing a piece of red cloth around their foreheads to show unity and solidarity for the hundreds of people killed and injured in Saturday's massive truck bombing. The crowd chanted anti-Al Shabaab slogans as they waited for the mayor of Mogadishu, the Prime Minister and the President to arrive. 
Finally, EU leaders have urged British Prime Minister Theresa May to do more to break the deadlock in the Brexit negotiations as they gather for a crunch Brussels summit. Dutch Prime Minister said a lot more clarity on the UK's financial offer was needed before talks could predict progress. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said there were encouraging signs, but that progress so far was not sufficient to open trade talks. However, Ms. Merkel suggested this could happen in December. Those were the local and international headlines. Major news is next at 5.45. From the RFM Newsroom, I'm Patrice Walters. Razor, we just want to talk about how we develop some Christian mind, Judo Christian mindset, use the Bible as the word of God, and then we kind of alter it based upon the time where we're in. So, this 3,000 year old, 4,000 year old law cannot be applied to we who is living in this time in the 21st century. We have to really figure it out. No. It doesn't matter of reparation. The Bible sanction reparation, you know. The Bible talk about reparation. Not using those words, but it talk about when slaves don't work and tired and you can't work no more. They must be given reparation. And in those days it was livestock. These are the words that is written in this Judeo Christian Bible that people claim to follow. But it's just follow at them own little thinking. Or them disregard it and say we are now in the New Testament. Yet still them still adhere to the Ten Commandments, which is in the Old Testament. You know, so we don't know. I don't know because I am not really a Judeo Christian mindset. My mind not into that thinking. But I grew up with it like most Jamaicans. And I realized that there are certain things in life that I couldn't maintain in my life right now. Given what I know now. Not what I know then. Because most Jamaicans don't have nothing to balance what them grew up and learn and what them inform themselves about. Them just stuck in a 4,000 years ago. So, if the Bible says you must kill homosexuals, I never kill no homosexual, you know. That means I am going against the word of God. And if the Bible says you must kill your picnic because it's disobedient, I never kill my picnic. So I go against the word of God. Yet still, it's not the Bible till I say I must get reparation, you know. It's an innate human thinking that when you look on the atrocities and knowing the history of this atrocity, we know, say, reparation is a just cause. So when you hear people say reparation, people don't talk about why them things they've done for a long time and where you want for a long time, forget about these things. No, 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 no. It's not so it go. It's not so it go. You don't want to. Maybe you can't forgive, but you're not going to forget. And that is the problem with African people. We keep going on like things is okay. And our daily living is outrageous. Look and know how white people set up a constitution. Because we have to say white people because the people them who is called our founding fathers of Jamaica were in, embedded in the constitutions that come from Britain, our former colonial masters, and still in some ways our still colonial masters. And when I check it and I say, but wait, we are members of the Commonwealth. Australia is a member of the Commonwealth. And according to where I go read the other day, you see the same Cameron man there, what you call the Prime Minister, original Prime Minister, Cameron, or one of the Prime Ministers, you know, say, them can come here, come live for over a year and run for Parliament in a parliamentary election just by being a member of the Commonwealth. In other words, you know, in other words, you know, Cameron can be the Prime Minister of Jamaica. And not be a citizen, but because he is a commonwealth citizen. And we are part of the commonwealth. So they have a youth, you know, where he is a Canadian, but because the commonwealth thinking grip way, 
we don't see it as a problem for a non-citizen be a parliamentarian. It's like, it, it, it's mind-boggling how we don't even recognize the weirdness of that. That anybody can come here from the commonwealth, live here for, two, for, for, for how much year? For, for one year, not even 10 years. Him there long. But him, you can't live here for you're over 21 and you live here for a certain length of time. You can't go run in a parliament. I don't know if that is something where I want to agree with, brethren. A non citizen, who is not a citizen. I think, say, logically, you'd have to be a citizen for be a parliamentarian and, and represent the people. Them. I, I don't care what I say, because that's a, open, a whole heap of can of worms to open up, you know. If you say, yes, a guy come here and just. You yeah, understand? <laughs> Whether I have to do good or bad, but there's certain legislation that must go through legal, and not le legislation, but issues that confront it because of the Europeans. Anyway, we want to tell you this now for the special part draw up next. Yes, we're waiting for it. So, we want to talk to, soon we want to talk to um, Frank Phipps, attorney at law, about two things. We want to talk to him about what we what we saw in in the parliament the other day and and, and this uh, dr alexos thing yes hey, Ruth, how DJ Amber. <laughs> what, yeah, what, what's more of there what's more of there he's here playing the music electric boogie woogie 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 oh, okay, that's what's okay, going okay, on right, right here all right, if ma, they're right here right. malicio him say big up yourself all, all right. right so we are we're on the grounds right now and as a matter of fact the excitement has been building since we last spoke motor so we have some schools coming in as part of giving some uh, school tours of the museum of course in the museum you know you can find some artifacts and some stuff that are original things from peter tosh are associated with peter tosh it's really for the fans and for those who want to know he's a big part of the music from you know way back when so uh, now we have kingston college going in on their tour and when they come out later i'll hear what they have to say about it and of course this is just one part of the entire celebrations for peter tosh's birthday today is his birthday and joining me to tell me more i have peter tosh's daughter niambe mcintosh and she is head of the peter tosh estate good afternoon good afternoon thank you for having me you're most welcome so how are you feeling excited on your dad's birthday oh, of course of course it's really nice that um you know every year we get to come together and bring the family together and come to celebrate in such a big way nice so today like i was saying to the listeners is only the start because from this evening onwards you guys are going to be busy doing a lot of exciting stuff tell us more right and so tonight we have um the Peter Tosh Gala, which is happening over at Spanish Court, and so that's invitation only. But if you know you weren't invited, make sure you go out to the symposium tomorrow at the University of uh, West Indies Mona campus. And so there's going to be a lot of great conversations that discuss how my father's music is still relevant today with so many issues that are happening in society today. And then Saturday we have the concert, a really big concert, and Sunday is the Reggae My Lightest excursion out to Belmont. And so the buses are full for that, but anyone can join us in Belmont and come on the property and make sure they just hail up the king. And it's pretty easy to find anybody traveling on the south coast or even coming down from Kingston. It's on the main road, Belmont Main Road. Coming from Kingston, it would be on your right and from Westmoreland side, it's on your left. All right, and you can see it there. There's pictures. There's beautiful stuff for you to see. So I hope people go out for that on Sunday. The buses are full already. Wow, that's exciting. Yes. Tell us about the lineup for Saturday night. And so Saturday night, I'm most excited because um, of my bias to see my niece, Jazara Tosh. She'll be performing for the first time here in Jamaica. And then I'm obviously excited for Andrew. We have Marcia Griffith. We have Luciano. Um, we have so many other um, artists. We have a special video appearance from Mick Jagger and um, Queen Africa is going to be performing Tony Rebel. The list just continues. I could keep going. <laughs> I could keep going. Great. Yeah. I think already they've got their money's worth with just what you've said. Right. All right. What time does it start? So the event is starting at 7.30, 8.30? 8.30, yes. And the band is reunited, your father's band. Isn't yep. that awesome? That's wonderful. The original Word Sound and Power Band. And if anyone didn't make it last year, oh my goodness, they missed the show. And it's it's just a, they're just a, a, a wonderful band. You have um, some of the greatest musicians to come together to celebrate. I can imagine what it's going to be like because it, it's Peter Tosh's birthday plus 
reggae with so many artists performing to a live band you know the band it does a whole lot of different oh, yeah. things for you there's nothing like it nothing like it so anyone new in town um definitely make sure this is an event that you do not want to miss where do they want to come for the event and so you want to come down to the uh peter tosh um museum trafalgo road at the Pulse Center. If you need more information, make sure you check out petertosh.com. All of the information is there. All right, nice. And where are tickets available? Here, I'm sure. Yes, the tickets are available here at the Peter Tosh Museum, 38 Travago Road. All right, we'll talk some more. All the best. And what do you want to say to your dad on his birthday before you go? Um, I'm just humbled and honored to, to be, you know, have that Tosh blood going through my, through my veins. So happy birthday, Pops. I love you. All right, there you go, Muta. That's a wrap for right now. Niambe McIntosh, Peter Tosh's daughter, telling us all about this very exciting weekend of celebrations for Peter Tosh's birthday. Muta, you know, earlier, me telling me I'm going to a museum, but I had to let the students go. So later, me tell you what my experience, all right? All right, Mama, give thanks. All right. Yeah. That was a live outside broadcast on the launch of the Peter Tosh Tribute Concert at the Peter Tosh Museum, Paul Z Quarters in Kingston, Trafalgar Road to be exact. Okay. We, did, we, we want to talk to the, the lawyer here. We hope we can get him, but we just want to talk about the, the idea of being not being a citizen of Jamaica, but becoming a representative, a political representative in the House of Parliament. I don't know the law, but we want to find out if this, like me now, could have gone to Canada and run in an election and get nominated in the, in the Canadian Parliament. I'd really like to find that out. So, we want to heal up a good friend of mine, even though it's my father and our grandfather, but I consider him to be a very eminent person. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Muta. How are you? I am quite okay, and I was good. really feeling good to know that we sat together in Parliament. Wasn't it a wonderful occasion? It was a wonderful occasion, but I don't think I want to experience it again. <laughs> and I was very impressed with the Prime Minister's speech where he made the point. Yes. that Jamaicans do not unite amongst one thing. We don't agree on one, one thing, thing, like your flag or your anthem or something. Yeah. You know? But they we actually agree agreed on this thing. And... Yes? They, Hello? They, 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 they agreed on the, the idea of the, 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 the removing of the, unlaw, the law to criminalize the, the, the heroes. They, they agreed on it. Yes, yes. Unanimously. Yes. So that was good. But look how long it took. May I tell you? And we want to really give thanks because we know that you was the one who shaped the, 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 the legal terminologies for really bring it to that level. Well, I didn't do much in that. What I was dealing with is the reparation. Yeah, yeah sorry, the reparation I was really talking about. Yeah, the reparation, yeah. yes. And yes, tell me something. We got, to use, we got to use their own laws and beat them on it. Yes, yes, yes. You know? All right. Because so, I saw where my MP Henry said in the reported where he said he wants to sue the Queen. Yes. But before you sue the Queen, let us use the Queen to put the British government on the man. All right, so I can ask you a question. If yes. the Queen is not there and our, and our successor is there, it's not the same idea I would have to start over the process again. No, no, it's the same idea. It's the succession of authority. Okay, okay. You don't, it doesn't change at the moment. Like, oh, Parliament changes, you know, yeah, yeah, order yeah, people yeah. change. But no, I, no, I, no, I was, I, I was listening to something that you were saying, and you say about make us not try to remove the Queen now because we need to get this reparation thing. Right, because Explain the that idea me. that we have yes. is that the Queen is the Queen of Jamaica according to our Constitution. Yes. Law is administered in the name of the Queen, Parliament, she's the head of Parliament, she's the head of the judiciary, she's head the, of the head state. of the executive, and therefore as the head of state, although our representative is the Governor General, mm. as head of state, the people always have a right to go to your head of state to mm -hmm. seek redress for any injury or damage you suffer. Yes. yes. Fortunately now, the Queen of England is also 
the Queen of the the Queen in England is also the Queen of the Government of the United Kingdom. Yes. So yes. if the people of Jamaica suffer some hardship, yes. they can say to the Queen, Well listen to me, your government in in England is the one who is hurting me, you know. Yes. To so put it this way, to put it this way. We get protection from her under the constitution. Yes. So you're saying and the that UK it, government must are accountable to her for their actions. Alright, so you are saying now that if we remove ourselves from the Commonwealth, it would mean that she have no um she she don't have to agree or amend anything that we have No no the Commonwealth has nothing to do with it. If we remove the Queen from the Constitution of Jamaica. Yes. It has nothing to do with the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is just that former British colonies form an association. No, so all that all, all, so that wouldn't affect um affect the reparation movement. No, 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 no. It can't affect the reparation at okay, all. Okay, okay, okay. Can't affect it. But before you get rid of the Queen, let us use her yes. to beat down the government of the United Kingdom. Yes. Because yes. because the the um the Anglican Church the Anglican Church that we have here and have in England. Yes. The head of that Anglican Church is the Queen. Definitely, yes. And and the Anglican Church has apologized for slavery. Yes. So I, how I come? I told that Queen Elizabeth the first did apologize to. No, no, the Queen has not apologized. No, okay. Queen Elizabeth the first. Oh, Queen Elizabeth the first says it was a dastardly thing to move people from Africa. Yes. And may heaven have the curse of heaven fall upon them. Yes, yes. Queen yes. Elizabeth said, condemn it completely. Yes, the first. Said well, it is wrong, Queen Elizabeth the first said to be good to use Queen Elizabeth the second. Yes, yes. No, we just want to make the people them understand what is happening here. That the first Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the first, condemned slavery. Yes, 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 and yes. said so that British people mustn't get involved in it at all. Yes, yes, yes. We have a record on that. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me because I'd have read it aloud to you. Yes. So the, repa know, the reparation that we see now, and we hear that the, 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 the group of um, Caribbean leaders under the, the, the SCARICOM is yes. now recognizing that it is a just cause and they must rally beside this cause. Well, let, well, let me put it this way. Yes, I agree with that. But it's a slightly different thing where we're putting Jamaica first in the, in, the, in, the, in the firing line is because some of these countries were under French rule at one stage, under Spanish rule at yes, another yes, stage. Yes. So it went cause a lot of conflicting um, arguments, you follow mm. me? Yes. We are going to divide the cake to France and peace to, to, Spain. <coughs> to Spain and peace to England. So in Jamaica case, it is always the British Empire. Yes, yes. So we don't have to deal with that. Yes. Secondly, some of these other islands also have the Tainos, the original people. Yes, yes. So the question of genocide applies to them. That's a further argument that can be put in their favor. Yes. It can be put in Jamaica's favor. So we're going with a clean sheet, going straight with a clear arrow. To the Queen. Yes, and if yes. we succeed and that, they can come in too, and we hope we get their support. Yes. Yeah. But then we don't want to confuse or dilute the focus of our argument. Yes, definitely. By the fact that the French are involved, that the, the, the genocide didn't apply to anybody in Jamaica. Yeah. All right. I, I want to me? shift the, the yeah? focus. I want to shift the focus from the reparation to this story and this argument going around about Dr. Alexis and is running as parliamentarian. Yes. In in Jamaica, not being a citizen. Oh, oh you see that. Well, well, what has happened, and I'm basing what I say among the reports that I have, and the reports are that this Dr. Alexis, who is running for election in St. Mary, is a Canadian citizen, and he has no Jamaican citizenship, because it's reported that he said he didn't have time, he was busy, yeah, he didn't yes, have yes, time yes, to yes, stand yes. up in a line to wait for Jamaican citizenship. But be that as it may, mm. the Constitution says that you are eligible to be elected to Parliament yes. if you are a Canadian citizen who has been here for the past, what, 12 months or something well, like yeah. that. You know? Now, now, that is very strange. Because 
this, according to what they report, this man has no connection to Jamaica, whether mm. by birth or by parenthood or by acquisition. He's no married to a Jamaican. We, we changed, we chased out Daryl Vaz, who had do, dual citizenship, Jamaica and another country. Yeah. But this man has no Jamaican citizenship at all. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to put him in parliament. That law is bad. That law is bad. And when you remember that to go to Canada, we as Jamaicans must, must get a visa to enter Canada. And England. And England, but we didn't know Canada know where this man is. Yes, yes. Okay, I have a visa to go to that man country. And that man can come here and run for election. Become a, we can become the Prime Minister of Jamaica, you know. Because of the Commonwealth connection with the, 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 the Commonwealth. colonial system, law. Yes, and, and, and the Commonwealth is a group of, of um, independent former colony, colonies of the empire. Yeah, yeah. That's not right. That can't be right. I don't think it can be right either. It can't be right. So what do you think? But then you the think point should... is, you know, Buta, eh? is that that law that says he can run, is deeply entrenched in our constitution, you know. You can't, government can't just change it so. Yes. You have to go up to the procedure about two-thirds in the House, yes. and it must remain in the House for so many months before it can go to the Senate, and it must be two-thirds majority in the Senate, and it must remain in the Senate for so many months before it can go any further. And if there's any person dissenting to it, then you have got to refer to the people, all the people who are on the electoral list, something like a referendum. For the people to decide. It's deeply entrenched. Deeply, deeply entrenched. Alright, you were saying that we as a Commonwealth citizen cannot go to Canada and become members of Parliament? No, no, so, Canada, you have to be elected to Parliament. You have to be a citizen. Mm -hmm. And to be uh, vote in Canada. Yeah. To vote. You have to be a citizen. You have to be a citizen to vote. Yes, not just, yes. Not just a matter of okay. being a member of the Commonwealth. How what? Not just a, being a member of the Commonwealth. No, no, not citizen. just being a member of the Commonwealth. You have to be a citizen to vote, a citizen of Canada. And to, and to be elected a representative in their parliament. They call it the House of Commons. You have to be a citizen. Yes. But we are, we are open it and whosoever will may come. Well, you know, yeah, the, the, the thing I have with it, you know, in, in, in a party with a group of people who is very um, not knowledgeable about certain things, why them couldn't just tell him, say, I ah, them never know, say, was not I don't know if them never know, I, was I, I agree with you. If they didn't know, they must say to him, no, boy, we can't support you, you know. Mm. We're going to ask our people not to vote for you. Yeah. Because you know it, what it, I mean? it kind of a bitter tear, not just... Not because it is constitutional, but that law means say, the law can deal with the law and not justice too. You know, the, you remember the, the Prime Minister made that point? Law doesn't necessarily mean it is right. Yes. And that's what our national heroes fought against. That is why they know... Something is point. right in law, but it is wrong. Yes, yes. That's the big point he was making in Parliament. You were there, we sat beside each other. Yes, 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 yes. You know, so not because this law says your Commonwealth citizen can do this. A responsible political party should say this is contrary to our feeling of democracy. Yes, yes. And the integrity of our state, we will not support that law. Yeah, the law, the law was there to protect the, the colonial masters in the beginning. It, it looks because, right. Because Henry Morgan, who was a murderer, was the governor of, of Jamaica one time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he was a thief and a crook and he was called Sir Henry Morgan that he made yeah. like a whole place in a Jamaica name of a, a name for him. Morgan, Morgan Valley. Man. You know, so it, it's like, we, we kind of, I don't know, it's a lopsided thing. I would need to correct yes. the lopsided sort of thing, you know. We have to re-look re -look at our constitution, the whole of it. Yes. Not just the Bill of Rights. Let's look reform. at the Bill of Rights. But yes. the whole of it, you know, to reflect the Jamaican people. You see, a new people were created, you know, because the indigenous people were destroyed by the Spaniards, eh? Yes, yes. And you realize that the black people in Jamaica of African ethnicity lasted from 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 the Spanish were here in 1494 right up to today 
That's the only ethnic group that has been consistent in Jamaica Mr. for yes. all these years, yes. as the majority of people. That's a hell of a responsibility, of you know. Of course, of course. And we never had a voice where we could take anybody to court to demand our rights according to the system then, until 1962, when we now have a voice that we can form a government representing yes. us, the people of Jamaica, and change what we want to change. do what is necessary for our protection. Yes. All right. It is. Me, me could jump from that now. The last thing we have, I, I just want you, you explain something to me. I don't know if you're. Uh, you're going to send your bill, you know. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know. You send me the bill, man. Tell you me again. Give me the bill. All right. Look I here. Uh, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Patrick Powell case that they call the X6. Yes, yes. A little bit from the newspaper report. All right. Patrick Powell was um, found guilty for not turning in his gun. Yes. Right? And he was, I think them said 12 months or something like some, that. Some but short term of imprisonment. Eh? But now we hear that he's, for, he's, he's been asked to pay $2 million for a case that him, him, him never get charged for. Which is the No, no, he was charged for the murder and he got away. Yes. Now, in a criminal court, when you're charged for a murder, they must prove guilt beyond reasonable doubt. Yes. But if the victim or the, 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 the relatives of the victim can still sue that man. Okay. Because of the loss of life of their, their son or daughter, whoever it is. And when you sue now, the standard of proof is law. Okay, okay. So you can get a judgment against him. him. So this, this, this $2 million so, is the judgment from the family against him? Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. It, it's, a, it's not as high. It happened, do you remember, in this golf, for ki- this, this footballer in America named O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson, yes. Um, um, yeah. The same thing get happened. Get off the criminal child, case. Yes. But when the family of the girl who was yes. killed yes. sue him, yes. the court felt that they should be compensated. Compensated, Okay. All right, Mister Fix. I don't want. I don't want my money. I don't want my bill. I don't want my bill going no further. That's so all. All right, give thanks. Give thanks. <laughs> nice talking with you. Eh? Yeah, man. Give thanks. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that was Frank Fibs, liar. Yes, I was just trying to put certain things into perspective. And yes, this is the stepping razor. This is the stepping razor. The art of war. You know. I just had think upon this thing about this this one sided thing. And I wanna have people well not people but the, the people them who overweigh us or no a, a legislate and a this and that. If them not see the one sidedness of this thing, yeah, because this up half away the lawyer just tell you a while ago. Frank people just tell you a while ago. We as Commonwealth citizens can go to to Canada and vote. Just by just being a commonwealth citizen. You have to be a citizen. You can't just go there so and say you have come up. Because just like how him there has to know. Right? He might not citizen of Jamaica, but him can't run in a parliament. We can't go, I can't to where Frank Fifth tell you, say, we can't go to Canada and just go, 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 go run, in a, run in an election so because we're part of the commonwealth. So, it ain't not obvious to say, the, the, the idea is in the interest of the, all, the colonial master them when they make this thing uh, how they make it you know see because we still have to go a visa to go to Canada you know and we are commonwealth that means being a commonwealth what is the purpose of being a commonwealth if we can't share the same things them with these commonwealth nations do because remember say is England is the head of authority you know because the, 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 the money still upon the queen still upon the Canadian money the Canadian them have that leeway because it's white people we as african people they also know from the farmer colonies them now we don't share the same thing you know it's like when malcolm x said sitting at the table don't make your diner you have to be eating you know see you can't sit around the table everybody eat and say boy use a diner too. you have to be eating too so we being a part of the commonwealth what, what what is the purpose of being part of the commonwealth you have to have visa to go to canada you have to have visa to go to England. An English person can come here and spend one year over 21 and run in a parliament. We can't just go there so without being citizenship and run in a parliament. It don't make no sense. 
it don't make no sense because the constitution says so the constitution need to be reformed and changed because it's not serving the interest of the majority of people in Jamaica. It was put there after some mentality that was designed by Europe. That European designs legislate um um constitution we have. There's so much thing that is against the people in the constitution. And you have to sit long in a parliament, this full full parliament thing where these guys sit long in a me now go back in there and I'm going to parliament. No, I'm going to parliament because sit long in a I said, no, really and truly, no, them people around my life. I mean, they not think that my mind, you know. I feel like Mr. Phibbs and say, Mr. Phibbs, I never know, say, really, I saw them go on in this place. Yeah. I'm a man, look at me, say, Muta, I too, you don't know. It was a nice day, them days. I must say, too, who know in your way, they go on so nice. <laughs> because the brother said, they go on worse than that, the man, but I said, them money are run my life, Rasta. No, sir, it can't, it can't be, man. Them now listen to one another, one man attack, and everybody attack over the next man, and them are use them cell phone and, and where the brother are named, um, where the brother are, where, 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 where come out against Alexis the other day, the JLP, Vaz, Vaz, Daryl Vaz, a bad boy that's in a parliament, you know, <laughs> no, Daryl Vaz, that's like, if not listen to nothing, you know, him just step on himself all around, it between him and Shash, you know, that's a weird, no, Rasta, I saw them people are going on in this place, yeah, no, that's enough for me. These are the queen, and the queens, and the queen area that you know. These are the place where the queen set the law of them and destroy laws with the voice of slave them, because the voice of slave them is intact. She they're doing a quite a good job for the for, 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 for the queen. So we hear sleepy. Sleepy, I'm a bridging, you know. I don't have to talk to sleepy, though. So sleepy, I'm a bridging, though, right? Sleepy, I'm a bridging. Trust me, that's like how Babs have a bridging. See, I can't say Babs if I read it. She said, I can't say it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I keep saying sleepy, but me and him are bridging. Him say, me and him are bridging, right? So, me and him are bridging. From his, from my man say, I don't have a bridging, I don't have a bridging. I don't have to fight it. I don't have a bridging, right? I don't have to afraid of it, but I don't have a bridging, all right? So, sleepy call me the air, I don't have to know. You are hearing him call me name, but it's a weird thing that the man call me name in a fire. I'm slowly saying, What? I'm a call me name in a parliament. I tell that to me. I two times I'm calling me name in a parliament. And the other one call me name to, you know, um, um, Mike Henry call me name to, you know. It wasn't disparaging, but mm -hmm. sleepy. Mm -hmm. Trust me, sleepy. I try to lick back at me now, but you know. Sleepy tell me half here, say, I did I go say something else, but he move it back. But I now tell you what I'm saying, but I go say no, you know. Mm -hmm. Because this one now. The Prime Minister, I get jealous. <laughs> <laughs> the Prime Minister, I get jealous. That's a weird. Sleepy, what you doing here? What you, what you saying here? You know, you understand? But, uh, <laughs> I sir. We can't, we can't. From IRFM, I would like to acknowledge my schoolmate, Kabu, who is in the audience, as well as my good friend, Muta Baruka who seems to make a lot of money out of me and my statements. <laughs> no! No, no, no! No! <laughs> no! Hey! Hey, give me the telephone book. Give me the telephone book. I'm about to sell for this. Give me the telephone book. Yes! I... <laughs> I tell you? No! Oh, we are there, 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 we him can't say, when me can't say what me want to say, him can't say what me want to say. That's all. So, make me hear what him say, I know. From IRFM, I would like to acknowledge my schoolmate, Kabu, who is in the audience, as well as my good friend, Muta Baruka, who seems to make a lot of money out of me and my statements. <laughs> no, believe you me. I need to respond to this to you. 
publicly. <laughs> Sleepy. But why you tell me what you what statement you make that we could have made money and fight? This all like Obia man thing, you know. This is some Obia. <laughs> Oh, this, no, no, Sanjay, I oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, wait there. It makes you not me a colleague like payroll, payroll, what I'm calling like payroll, I fight. Him statement, them turning on music, no, me have, me have to call it money, I fight. Me, I make money, I fight, statement, them. I wonder if him want RFM come down for me, say, me I take payroll, I. <laughs> no. And if I don't know, watch out. Bunty, you know, so I call Bunty near more than we call him there when Bunty did our minister. Bunty get more leaks from it than him, you know. But him say, me and him a friend. At that, no. Him say, me and him a friend. I can't still call him sleepy. You know, when I'm friend, him say, Muta. You know, say, I got to. Him say, I'm Miss Mantic, Mantic, you're a friend, you know. But him I try to figure out why me call him sleepy. Eh? Him say why can't why why muta call you sleepy? Him say boy I don't know you know. So me don't know if I that I make me I make the money. <laughs> Fib see me then. <laughs> why me have to go in a business with him you know? Cause me know him me, I know him uncle. I talked to him uncle already. And now I hear him call me in a parliament. Sit down right there so I hear him talk about me in a parliament. And now I see it, it, it is recorded now that him say, me make money off of him. You think I can't sue him for that? No, me I wonder if I can't sue him for that. Is there any, I can't call Frank Phipps and get an answer. If I can't sue him for that. <laughs> I say, me have it, what, which part of the money there? You know, Mr. Montague, me I beg, me I tell you the truth, you know. Mula love make some money off of you. Yes, I love to make some money off of you. So you know what you're going to do. You're going to call me. And me, you're going to talk about how I can make some money off of you. Because I really love to make some money off of you. I don't feel no way to make some money off of you. But here I want to tell you now. You see, my China friend them who not embarrass me because you know. The road where the Chinese embassy is on. Some big hole they're on the road. <laughs> that is very embarrassing. That is very bad. Then I did my drive on the, China, on the road, the China, you know the road where from Lady Musgrave to it, 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 it connect to Old Hope Road there, where the Chinese embassy there. If you ever see the old them up on the road, let me ask about weird. This is embarrassing, man. The Chinese them walk away, the best road them and thing. Feed them road, the embassy the on the road where some big hole there. Though that is very embarrassing because when I go to them now, they go say, but you know, to say your government are treating me bad. I don't want them to say that. Anyway, we could go back to this thing. IRFM now brings you a live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Touch Tribute Concert at the Peter Touch Museum Pulse Headquarters in Kingston. Over now to DJ Amber. DJ Amber. Hey, thank you for... Hi, Mota. You know, I was just listening to you about you and the minister. And just now, I went into the Peter Touch Museum and had my look. And I'm in there, I hear this voice, and I look around, and it's Mota Baruka on it, the it, TV screen. Let me tell you, know, so omnipresent. <laughs> Your fear must bad. That's why the minister has said what I'm saying. Eh? <laughs> no, but I don't even talk about it in the museum. I peter touch me at the museum. I peter touch me at the That's right. And, you know, I heard the voice, and I just looked around and I smiled. I'm like, all That's right. Beautiful. You That's know, beautiful. It's, yes. it's all good. Yeah, yeah, man. So we have some more students here. We have the Alpha students, Mota, and to our listeners as well. We have some brothers and sisters coming through as well. And some persons who are involved in the organizing of this. The students are waiting to do their tour and to learn more about Peter touch today is his birthday and part of the celebrations include what's happening here today now i also want to tell you about what's coming up tomorrow and to help me do that i have dr michael barnett of ue mona good afternoon dr barnett how are you yes amber great 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 all right you know so i get to understand you're the chairperson for the symposium which will be tomorrow by the way it's the annual peter Tosh symposium this time under the theme equal rights and justice examining peter Tosh as the voice of the down pressed all right so tell us about what's going to happen tomorrow well tomorrow we got a great array of panelists who will talk to peter Tosh as the agitator and advocate for equal rights 
for one and all, you know. We have um, Professor Carolyn Cooper, uh, Jasmine Rand, civil rights lawyer. We have Ai Jabalani Tafari, Rastafari journalist and author, Dr. Ajamu Nangwa, and Niambe Tosh, you know, representing the Peter Tosh family, and myself as a chairperson. We're going to have musical performances by Jazara Tosh, granddaughter of Peter Tosh, Nexus, history man, and some surprise artists, you know. So it's going to be great. I mean, um, Jasmine is going to talk to equal rights in terms of legalization of the herb. Um, she's going to talk about the criminalization of black males in the U.S. as well as in J.A. Um, I don't know if Niambi gave much information, but unfortunately, Jawara Tash, um, you know, he fell victim to the you know, incarceration system in the U.S. Um, unfortunately, right now, he was beaten to a pulp, you know. I mean, he's uh, in a coma, comatose. It doesn't look good, you know. I mean, brain damage, a lot of brain injuries. So I know Jasmine is helping them. I'm going to basically sue the, 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 the prison system in New Jersey, you know, because, you know, you go in and you're supposed to have, you know, Right. Serious, you know. All right. Okay, so she'll talk about that, and I'm sure that we will hear much more from the other presenters. What time do you right. start? Yeah, we're starting at 6 o'clock sharp. at the 6 inter p.m.? Mm -hmm, tomorrow, yeah. Interfaculty Lecture Theatre, which is on the campus. It's near Juicy Parties on the UA Mona campus. And um, as I say, yeah, so I've got to speak. I Jabalani, I got to speak to Peter Tosh's um, advocacy for equal rights and Peter as a pan-Africanist and you know he encompassed so much more than just the advocacy for the legalization of herb. Um, the other thing is that um, we are going to also hear from Professor Carolyn Cooper who was able to interview him after the Super Jam concert in 83 and speak to Peter's inside view on the music industry because for Peter a lot of injustice did occur inside the music industry as well as outside in you know in terms of the general public milieu you know so the bottom line is is that this will be a very information packed and entertaining symposium because we have several musical performances artists are going to perform on tracks but it's going to be like a prelude for the concert happening on saturday right, right here at pulse you know sounds great man and it's free it's people free. are invited to come on out and participate learn something um about peter tosh and all the other things that you just heard dr barnett speak about thank you so much thank you thank you amber yeah man all tomorrow, right you know, all tomorrow right. interfaculty lecture theater six o'clock all right be on time people all right and uh, joining me right now for a quick chat i have a teacher here and he's from casey he is mr jomo Korenga. did i get your name right yes, yes yes all right good afternoon afternoon all right so you're here with what grade or is it different grades um it's actually 12 and 13 grades oh okay all right so big boys and the head boy and his deputies are here as well. All right. You guys organized to be a part of today. Tell us why and what Peter Tosh means to you. All right. We were invited here by Kinsey Cooper. He's a KC old boy. And so he had called the school and invited us here. Um, Peter Tosh for us, uh, well, for me, um, is a pioneer of reggae music. And he's, what I say, was a revolutionary person. He was uh, someone who stand up for our cause and I think it's something good for the young generation to look up to, a person to look up to and emulate. All right, so when you went inside with the boys, um, what was their response like? And do you find that they know much about Peter Tosh? Actually, yes, the, the, the students know. I mean, there are some stuff they didn't know, but they were doing the reading up. They were actually reading up before they came because so, they were in case anyone asked them any questions. So they're, they're those type of students. All right, great. Big up to the KC boys in the house, grade 12 and 13. Hello, boys. Everything all right? All right, great. And thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, so there you have it, Musa. Another link from day one of the Peter Tosh birthday celebrations. You just heard about the symposium. And the tours continue. The music is here later on. They have an invitation-only party. And it goes all the way to Sunday to the Reggae My Light is road trip to Belmont. All right, Muta? Will the party start? The party start now. I don't, may I no, tell you a party start now on the show? Wait till Sunday. 
Yes, the show is tomorrow. Is Saturday. The symposium is tomorrow with some performances, including Peter's granddaughter. I know. And I then say, the big show at, on at Saturday. At nine o'clock, people are going to do their party. Said we are not here. Where tonight? Yeah. No, tonight they have the invitation only party. Where? Where? Um, I think it's at one of the resorts nearby. I'm not. It's not here though. Okay. It's not at. You can find out the next time and tell me. Yes, man, I right. will. I may go and listen to you. May, may I hear right. your motor? Yeah, man. I will give time. That was a live broadcast from the launch of the Peter Tash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum, Paul's headquarters in Kingston. Yes, 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 yes. My name is in the Parliament. <coughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. That's really, really funny. But I'm glad to say yeah, that Mr. Mian is his friend. You understand? Yes, Mian is his friend. Yes, I really appreciate Sleepy for say that. Yes. And I don't want nobody to call him Sleepy. I don't want to run joke for in a parliament and say, Sleepy, sit down. But I tell you what I do when I did. <laughs> I tell you what I do when I did in the parliament, you know. Hey, you, shut up, sit down. Yes, <laughs> sir. Be here, be here, be here. Where, 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 this man Mackenzie. Me tell you, say, this man Mackenzie, me tell you the truth. Me love, all, me love your music, them. Me listen to you on Sunday, and me love your music, them. But me never know, say, I saw you go out in the parliament. <laughs> be here, be here, be here. This man Mackenzie, shout and say, hey, when you tell him, you go get him, him citizenship. Sit down. <laughs> That's real. Nobody don't use the rest of the parliament, that you know. Anyway, I, 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 I saw it go. I saw, I saw them things go. The mark you see it name. The man them sit on about that hour and a debate. The difference between the word shall and may. One hour, them are debate. But if them should have used a word name shall, I use a word name may. And me I say, wow. So the school picking them up there. So make them explain to them what the word shall is and what they explain. Because I have a whole school picking up there, you know. I said, see the school people, them, them child has got shout up there and so said, tell me something. Mm-hmm. Why don't you get up and tell the difference between shall and me? Because I can't believe it's a big, big man around the country at, 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 at back and forth, back and forth over two words, shall and me. Anyway, that is that. And I don't know if I want to go back down to that place. Believe me. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to go when the Chinese then build up for them own. I look forward to the Chinese one, man. The Chinese one supposed to look nice. Yes, supposed to look nice with seat where you can stretch out your foot. Them kind of way there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And tell the, the kind of government we have by the road where we have. We have some arms house roads, so you know what that means about the government. Arms house government. We are call upon all the Australian, them and all the British, well, the English people, them and the Canadian. If you want a little country for run, you know, you can't come down here, you know, because you know, if you have no citizenship for run it. The constitution say from one member the commonwealth, you can't come run the thing. So, Crocodile Dundee, if you still live out the place, a terrible thing. Terrible, terrible thing. Crocodile Dundee, we need it down here from Australia to come run the thing. Realist. Calling James Bond, 007, you want a country for run, just come down here, you're a member of the British commonwealth. <laughs> We have Sanchez and we, I don't even know what I call him to him nowadays in the Rasta. World, hey, world boss, world king, world, world queen. We don't know what I call himself. So, yes, this is the stepping razor, the art of war. We see us, you know. But we say laughing is a healing. But we see us because we don't want to cry and we don't want to so vex that we do things that go against you understand certain things because we have all those intentions too you know we don't have to do have the intentions you know we have the intention but i know int- at intention can carry you go to prison you understand we have a whole heap of intention in our heart because the way all the things stay in a jamaica you so you have to have certain intention anyway we want to talk to our engineer in name we well, also well, Tremaine, we don't know. Last name. Where last name, Virgin? Spencer. Tremaine Spencer. He called her Spencer, actually. All right. All right, now. You, you, you catch me interest. You catch my wife interest. And she was the one who said, 
listen to this story and see if it's not a story where you make, need to make Jamaica here. We don't even know if we have the length of time to talk to you about the whole of the story, but we want you to tell me how you, how you become, be, be, why, why is in Jamaica, how you become to be in Jamaica. Well, I was, you could say, I, I was given a voluntary departure to come back from the United States back to Jamaica. Um, I was involved in a robbery that went bad. I did some time. I did six years in prison. And after my prison sentence, I was, um, had to go to court for them to decide, am I eligible to keep my green card? I didn't want to go through all those matters of going back to court again and staying in jail longer. So I decided to say, hey, I would just go back to Jamaica on my own. The so United you are States a Jamaican government. then? You are a Jamaican? Yes, I'm a Jamaican. So what, what period of your life you leave Jamaica? Well, I left Jamaica when I was two years old. Okay. A little bit less than two years old. So all of your life and shaping of your behavior is shaped in America? Yes. Everything about me is. American. It's American, but you can't vote. Well, I could have voted before I left. Oh, you could have voted? Well, you, you, yeah, yeah. I, I got one vote oh, you, in, actually, before I did left. Oh, you was a citizen? Yes. All right. So, the, what they do? They, they deport you? Well, you I know I call it, it a, deport. Well, it was the process like a deportation, but I decided to come on my own. Okay, tax, oh, you prefer to be here than here. Yeah. yeah. So they give you that option sometimes. Ah, you, you, say it's a, you, you say it's a robbery gone bad. Explain yes. the, 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 well, the gone bad. I was young. I was sitting at home. The people who came for me, I never knew them. They were older people than I was. I was 18. They were in their 30s. They decided to say they wanted me to pick up some weed for them. I had no problem with it because I was young and I smoked weed. So I was like, cool, I'll pick up the weed. So they took me on this mission and a shootout happened. One of them was killed. The other one got away, and I was left with a gunshot wound. So mm. I went to the hospital. Going to the hospital in America, you know, they would come and question you and ask you about where you were shot, what happened. I didn't give up that information, but the detectives, they were thorough. They didn't give, you know, no leeway. So they came back, took my ID to the people that the crime happened, and they pointed me out, fingered me. They came back and charged me for murder. Mm -hmm. I was facing the death penalty of 54 years to life. Hello? Yes, you hear? So, you, all right, so it's you that shot the, the, the man or somebody else? Well, somebody else shot the man. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, I was just there. So. All right, so you decide to come home. Come yes. home to who? Well, I didn't know anybody. I always wanted to come to Jamaica. From seeing the Jamaican commercials on TV in America, you mm. think Jamaica is a beautiful place yes. because the commercials look outstanding. So everybody I knew wanted to come to Jamaica. That's American, so I always wanted to come, and I knew that I had some family here, but I didn't know them. Okay. But when I did come and the process came, I guess my mother probably called my auntie, and my auntie picked me up from the um, airport, yes. my auntie, uncle, and cousin. I never knew none of them, but they took a wild guess, yeah. came to me and asked me, is my name Kish? And I said, yeah, I used to use that name when I was a little kid, and mm. I just went with them. All right, we could talk about the American part right now. You say you was 18. 18 a big man still, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, some man just come here and ask you, you did associate with the people them who well, come here. I didn't associate with them, but there are, you could say, people that lived in a house that I was living in associated with them. Yeah. So I was living with some people. And but I there must be a certain connection and trust why them ask if you go pick up ganja for them. Well, I uh, you don't want to say that on the radio. Well, I figured more or less that um, I was there and they needed an the extra hand and I was an able body and they looked at me and was like, oh, he, he looked like he can do the thing if it came down to it. So mm. the person who they associated with, I don't want to mention the person's name. No, you have to mention the name. Are you yeah, talking about? But when they, I ask you, when, when I ask you, you see, it, it, it sounds like you don't want to talk because what happened now is that you can't just go to your yard and somebody just come to your yard and say, Carry some words to me and you say, okay, I'll carry the road because you used to smoke or that thing. There must sound something more deeper than that. It's not really much more deeper. It was just that simple. I didn't know the people, but the 
people who I lived with did know them and they yeah. were involved in certain criminal activities. Yeah. And being that I was living in the house with them, they must have felt like I wasn't paying no rent. Okay. And they needed me to do something in order to pay yeah, them back rent. Yeah. for staying with them. So, so at the time, it was just pick up some herb. And I was like, okay, fine. If you just want me to pick up some herb, yeah. I don't have no problem with it. So that was your first and last time to get at the other side of the law? Yes. And you end up back in Jamaica. How long were you there in Jamaica? I've been in Jamaica 13 years now. 17? 13. 13. So what was it like when you just come to Jamaica? All right. So you well, find... Tell me what happened when you come to Jamaica first. Coming to Jamaica, it was a new place for me. It, the sun was bright. It was a beautiful country. I, I pretty much say, I'm going to give Jamaica a chance. I've never been here before. So let's see how it goes. Being that I used to see the commercials on TV, I was just ready to go swimming and enjoy some fun, you know, like I was on vacation. But um, after a while, when you run out of money and need money, you see stress start to come down on you. So I had to think about my future. So the first thing I decided to do was to go back to school. I um, enrolled in HART. I did a course in data operations. And by going to HART, that opened up Jamaica to me. It opened up the society. It allowed me to explore and know the different areas and the different ropes of mm -hmm. Jamaica. So you could say heart was a good opportunity for me. Yeah. So I, after going to heart, I got a small job at the Ministry of Finance where I um, also met more people and learned to, you could say, function a little better in the country. Getting jobs sometimes is not always that smooth because I still have an American accent. Yeah. So the first thing people say to me, are you a deportee? You know, anywhere I go and work, are you a deportee? Yeah. So <laughs> sometimes that's annoying. And over time, you know, it can really get to you and yeah. sometimes it gets you angry and sometimes some yeah. workplaces it ends up in arguments and fights simply because people want to run in and say deportee yeah. you know so so was there any time when you tell them yes you're a deportee well no <laughs> no <laughs> because i don't really like the stigma of deportee i, no, I, know, I don't but, really think I that's mean, fair yeah but you know Somebody, what i mean when they say deportee you know what i yeah. mean yeah. yeah, they automatically say, oh, you're a criminal. Yeah, you're, you're not a criminal. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you, you, you've you been here, you went to art, you get yes. a job with the ministry. Yeah. And what, what was you at the ministry? Well, I was I was a clerk. I was a styling clerk at the ministry. And it, it went well, but there was a um, church sister. She was high up in the ranks, and she said she don't like me working there with her, and we go to the same church. She must have think that it would have caused me something that caused her. Some embarrassment. I didn't think that was true. <laughs> you and a church sister are work at the same place. Yes. And she said she don't like when you work there with her because people will find out we go to the same church and they would think that she got me the job and it will okay. cause her some okay. embarrassment. Yes. She don't you know, she she basically didn't want to give me a chance. So what happened after? What happened? You leave well, the job or she leave you? Yeah, well, I left the job at the Ministry of Finance and ended up getting a job at a veterinary clinic called All Pets Veterinary Clinic. I yes. used to work alongside Dr. Murray. Okay. And she really taught me the field. She taught me how to deal with dogs, how to handle it, their different emotions, and how oh, to yeah? warm dogs. Yeah. And so the, over a period of what time you learned that? Over a period of what time? You could say over a period of a year. You learned how to anger the dog, the one thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you yes. still you still work with him? Well, I don't work with that particular doctor anymore. I left that job and ended up working at the JSPCA for about three years. Everything went well there. The JSPCA was a beautiful place to work. A lot of co-workers, I mean, we had a good time working there. It was a beautiful place to work. Everybody's beautiful. Sometimes you could say, but overall, yeah, lovely place to work. And after working there for three years, I really learned how to deal with animals and it, it, I really felt comfortable with them so yes, yes. I started my own business I started to groom dogs because I feel oh. like that's a way to make some extra money you know and I can so how long you started it. It on your own how long well I started grooming dogs now for about mm, eight years now oh you see Rose eh? yes and it's eight been going years. good yeah it's very good it's going very good wow yeah, so, keeps me going, so, you know, I, I, I never have to beg nobody no food, and no money, nothing. Yeah. You know, it keeps me going, and I'm proud of myself for doing it. Well, I'm sure proud of you, too, and I know I will be proud of you. I must be proud, given that yeah. 
where you're coming from to where you is now and you know there, yes. there, there's life after deportation man yes there's a lot of life after deportation i'm thinking about going back to school and probably becoming a nurse a doctor if i can you know so yeah. being deported is not the worst things that can happen to you you yeah. know there's yeah. still life in jamaica you can start over your life again yeah. you know Come well marcus gavin started over yes you know, as a deportee, Marcus Gavin started over and now look at him now. He's a natural yeah. hero. Yeah, right. Yes. So maybe one day you will be able to run in Parliament. <laughs> you want me to run in Parliament? <laughs> eh, <it's> a, <laughs> what do you mean? They, they know Jamaican. You are Jamaican yeah. by birth. Yeah. For your Jamaican by birth, you are Jamaican, you know? Yes, man, yeah. Yes, well, right. you have somebody in Parliament that's not a Jamaican now, so what's No, him, ro- him trying to be, him, 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 him going to, him trying to be a Parliament with not a citizen. <laughs> oh, not a okay, citizen. Okay. I, maybe I missed something. What do you think about that? Right? What do you think about that? As a youth? Well, well, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky thought to me because, to me, Jamaica needs international support. We're on this isolated island by ourselves. We do don't really produce that much. But you mean not an international person. mean not an international person. In Bala, Canada, him come and come and come live. When oh, well, he's a Canadian. Maybe he can get us some Canadian help. Maybe he can get some Canadian companies to come here and build and show a stronger That's interest. That's what I mean. I said, maybe we could have get you know. crocodile done if we come here. <laughs> yeah, let the crocodiles come too. And James Bond, really you know. Smart like, people too. You know, in history, they say Australia was once a prison. Now look at Australia. May now. I tell you? May I tell you? Yeah. So Once a prisoner, look where the Aboriginal people them. Yeah, you have yeah. some great minds out there. And yes. To, to me, Jamaica kind of lack on supporting the youth into pushing the development of their mind. Like, yes, yes. You know, yes. you have sciences. I mean, I don't see the country really support sciences and certain trades and fields that much or even push it like uh, yes. be abroad, you know, so... I think the country really needs to up their interest in certain subjects and areas, but... Jamaica, in the wall, is not a bad place. You no, know, definitely a not. a little bit of badness yeah. here, but it's yeah. not really that bad. All right, let me ask you something now. Yeah. Doing the, 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 the grooming, the grooming of the dog, them. Yeah. You have any plans to open a place where you can employ other people and teach them to do that? Yeah, I do. That. I do, actually, but I'm trying to build myself now, but... There are a few persons who I've met along the way that showed interest in grooming dogs, and I gave them a few pointers and hints. But I plan to build me a facility and hopefully train some people how to groom dogs. And think about it: if you could learn grooming here and you were able to travel to the United States or Canada doing grooming, that's a new field for Jamaica yeah. because those countries would need us to come instead of just helpers and farmers. Now we can have groomers go and yeah. make money and come back and build homes for themselves because in those countries, grooming is big, you know. All right. Let so, me ask you a question. We have to go. We have to go. But suppose you get the opportunity to go back a foreign. You, you not take that opportunity? Of course. Okay. Without a doubt. All right. Where it was? In, in, in California? Yes. Okay, you sound like a man from California, trust me. <laughs> yeah, 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 accent, so California is. Where are California? Los Angeles. Los Angeles, okay. Yeah. They, are, they are the land of the angels. Yeah. Well, Bridget, I'll tell you something now. You sound very motivating, and you sound like you have something in mind, and I aim, and we hope so you just follow that, and just go through with it. You know, All right. and we yeah. want to heal you up, and we know some wife, oh, my wife out there listen to you, and she really yeah. feel that she feel you, you know, she feel you, yeah. and when 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 she feels somebody, she really feel somebody. Yeah, trust me, she no she no itch when it come yeah. on to vibration. You understand? Yeah. All right, so give thanks, Virgin. I hope to see you again. Yeah. All right, I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. man, give thanks. Yes. Right. Yeah, man, the Virgin come at Jamaica. Two years while him left here. So Mr. American, him come here, deported and see, you know, him, him, him go on. You know, man say more and turn nurse and all them something there. Him go on. RFM now brings you a live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Tash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum, Pulse Headquarters in Kingston. DJ Amber again. DJ Amber. Hey, Muta, thank you so much for rejoining us. I'm here walking around in the yard and enjoying the selections, all courtesy of DJ Smurf. He's playing the Peter Tosh tunes. We're turning it all the way down for we want eerie little. Yeah. 
All right, so we have the music going. We have people coming in, finding out what's going on. People can also get their tickets. I'm here at the Peter Tosh Museum for the music festival, which will be on Saturday. This is the launch of it, and as part of the launch, they're having school tours. They're also inviting the public to come on over. We got some people here, and you know, just really sharing it. And going into the museum today, it's half price to the public. It's also half price tomorrow and on Sunday as well. And Saturday, for the whole weekend of Peter Tosh's birthday, it is all about half price to enter the museum. Now, there are many special guests which are um, invited to be a part of this and the public as well. On Saturday, the music show is just going to be awesome with people like Marcia Griffiths, Freddie McGregor. There's also going to be a, a performance uh, message also from Mick Jagger, who was a big fan of Peter Tosh, on screen and lots of live performances. Now, I have with me a very special guest. He is a member of the band Who, for the rock and roll lovers, they will know. But this is Zach from the band Who. How are you, Zach? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Is it your first time to Jamaica? No, it's my fifth time. Your fifth time. And I, I get to understand that you're a lover of Peter Tosh's music. I am and his message. And we're here to keep make sure people know his message. All right. Um, how long have you been a lover of not just Peter Tosh's music, but reggae? Because I know Who has been around for some time. Well, because I was into punk, right? And through punk and the clash, I got into reggae. And then, so, they, so they brought me here. Wow. But well, we're really here to say happy birthday for Peter, you know. Uh, this is Shush. This is tomorrow. Oh, on, she's going to be singing? singing? on Saturday night. Yeah. Shush. All right. Are you... Get up, stand up. Okay, get up, stand up. That's the song you're going to do. Roger, I'm going to get up, stand up, and brand new second hand. All right. Welcome to Jamaica. Is it your first time? No, I've been here five times. Also, yeah. all right. One, two, uh, oh, what's here? <laughs> Big ups to you. So I see you're learning a little Jamaican, you know, how to deal with people and all of that. That's lovely. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it's a beautiful country. The music, there is something special that happens here. Of course. And we know it's going to be magical on Saturday night. You're also performing, Zach? Yeah, yeah. I'll be playing Saturday night. We're playing two songs. One's a surprise. All right. Wonderful. How did you? Okay. <laughs> she said it all. She said it all. That's okay, though, because we want people to be excited to come. And, you know, Peter Tosh really did reach out to a wide cross-section of people, like yourselves, people from Japan, Africa, and all over. Great message in the music. Now, looking out in the world, I know you see a lot of young artists coming up. Anybody you like? Any Jamaican artists? I like Chronics. Right. I like the Roots. He's bringing back Roots. I like it. It's yeah. good. It's good. And you? I, I agree. All right, wonderful. Well, guess what? I'm going to wish you all the best uh, with the performance on Saturday and enjoy the rest of your time here in Jamaica. Thank you, my darling. All right, and big up to the who. Yeah. Big up to Peter Tosh. Happy birthday. Right? All right. So there you have it. Two friends uh, coming over, especially for this occasion, really just sharing the love and showing the love for Peter Tosh. We have the students gathering now on the outside as part of the tour. It's a nice evening here in Kingston. So we're inviting people to come back. Come on out. And enjoy. This is the launch of something big. It's Peter Tosh's birthday uh, celebrations. Then tomorrow, it's all about the symposium at UWE. They're going to be talking about a wide cross-section of subjects. They have some great presenters on there for the symposium tomorrow, um, which includes Professor Carlin Cooper, Jasmine Rand, and also uh, Michael Barnett, Dr. Michael Barnett himself, who we heard earlier. And then on Saturday, it's all about the show. Great lineup. Luciano, Toots and the Maters, Kimani Mali, Andrew Tosh, Queen Africa, Jesse Royal, and many more. We'll tell you all about them later on. So, Muta, I'm going to hand it back to you right now. We'll have our final link right after Cashpot. The, um, the museum is open, still half price from today to Sunday. Muta? Yes, Mama. All right, later. All right, you take up most of the program today, though, but I don't know nothing. Me know you love me, it's all right. Yeah, me come sit in <laughs> one of your program on a Sunday. Muta love that. All right, Mama. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Tash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum, Pulse Headquarters in Kingston, Pantrafalgar. It's your choice. A I tell you, music healing, you know, music healing, trust me. So, we know that Virginia a long time still, you know. A long time I don't hear from him, Jigsy King. J you remember Jigsy King? Yeah, a long time I don't hear from him. In combination, you know, with with Barry Salmon. This is the stepping razor, the art of war. We're there with you. All right, watch what we're going to do now. Change up the whole vibes, I know. Believe you me. The whole vibes will change up. Listen. You ready? All right. Me never ready. You ready now. 
Yes, the old slave mill is grinding slow, but grinding still. Um, yesterday, uh, yesterday or Wednesday, Tuesday, the Jamaican Parliament voted everyone, no opposition, that Marcus Garvey, Paul Bogle, George William Garden, Sam Sharp, and Tachi must now be declared what you call now, must not be again criminalized on the books. Because, you know, they were seen as criminals by, or by the, 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 the slave masters, the, the colonial, the British colonial system made them criminals. Well, we know over the years we have been lobbying for these things and we see it come to the forefront. Like many other things, that's why I tell you, say, we now feel like, say, not, not going to happen because we keep doing it and we just see it every day we get up to see the things now change. We know say it has changed, but you hear the virgin say, the slave mill are grinding slow, you know, but it are grinding still. But we are going to make sure, say, that it stop grinding. So when you hear we talk about certain things and keep saying it, sometimes we even say it over and over that I want to go down and say, but why Muta keep saying the same thing? Because that is what it is. Marcus Garvey show me that. Marcus Garvey tell me that. You can't just say something one time and done this up. Because if you don't see nothing happen when you say it and it needs to be done, you have to keep saying it. You know, it's like a terrible song where you hear on the radio all the while. You just keep a year to year to you start to say, we well, love that tune there, you know, I really had tune, it's a full, full song. Mm -hmm. So you we are saying now, we're glad to know that finally the government has awoken to this reality that these freedom fighters are not criminals. Because I hear, hear, hear Frank Fifth just say, the law is not necessarily right. And we see that in colonial times that the law is not necessarily right. So we have to put things right, you know, and create our own space. As African people, we have to rewrite the history. Because the history that was given to us was washing our brains like our brains dirty. So we come to this understanding and we come clearly and we really say give thanks that finally... It is half the books that these people, and, and not only the people them, but the people them who are associated with them, is now not, not, no longer recognized as criminals. Now one might say, but that gone and that done, what, what difference that going to make? It make a difference in the historical records. And I will tell you why it make a difference in the historical records. 2,000 years after a man named according to the Christian thinking, a man named Jesus Christ walked upon the earth, so them say. And for 2,000 years, black people have looked upon this European image that was given to us by a man named Michelangelo. Michelangelo was given the, the job to paint. For those of you who ever go to all the Sistine Chapel, well, I don't know where people go there, but we go there already and see the, 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 beautiful, the beautiful artwork that was done by this man that was given and given to, to do these things, to create an image. I want the people them listen you know, because I'm going to shock the whole of Jamaica right now. I'm going to shock them until they can't get shocked no more, including young, young still on beside me. So. But we are lead up to the shock. You understand? All right now. This man named Michelangelo was given the, the, the thing for, 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 for do a statue. Not a statue, a, a artwork of Jesus Christ. Just like how the, 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 the art, the, the sculpture the other day, the sculpture was given a, 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 a authority to, to give a, a, a statue, a bust, a Marcus Giave. By the way, we see them two up in one there. The other one, because to me personally, it never looked like him did that again. But that's not that story. But what Michelangelo did, as any artist would do, is to get a, a model. 
for this thing. Him nobody just do it out of him end. Him get a model. And Michelangelo choose him relative as a model for paint the image of Jesus Christ. So from Michelangelo to now, the image where Christian have in them head, who them claim is Jesus Christ, is Michelangelo relative. Now think about it. For how much years now you are, have an image of Jesus Christ and is a man, cousin, uncle, we live in a Europe, image you have in your head of Preto. All right, why is it significant and important? Because we will come to the nitty gritty of the thing now. I dare anybody to tell me that what I am going to say now is not something that going to make them feel so weird and strange. That for years, and we can't say it now, now that them, 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 them take off Paul Bogle off of the books as a criminal. But here we know, you see the image with Jamaican people have a Paul Bogle and if you don't believe what Muta Baruka said, go up on your computer and look for a man named Jenkins, Thomas Jenkins. He was the first black man to have a patent in America because he did invented the dry cleaning. He invented dry cleaning in America in 1821. And if you look on your computer and see a picture of Jenin. Tell me who you say. Tell me who you say. What that mean? It means that the image of where we have a Paul Bogle over the years is the image of a next man in America named Thomas Jennings. When you don't believe what me I say, I dare you to go to on your computer and look for Thomas Jennings. I dare you to look on your computer and look for Thomas Jennings, who invented dry cleaning in America in 1821, the first black man to get a patent to do this thing. You know, so it's just here. May I show no it's just here, you know. What we think is real sometimes is an illusion. The picture that we had on the money representing Paul Bogle is a man named Thomas Jennings. The image and the, the money that they're going to discard soon is not the image of Paul Bogle. The family of Paul Bogle in Morant Bay has always looked at that picture and reprint that picture as Paul Bogle. It is not the picture of Paul Bogle. It is the photograph of a man named Thomas L. Jennings who got the first patent in America. Because in design, I'm create what you call the dry cleaning in America in 1821. Now, why I say that to you? It's a long time I want to say it to you. But when I'm in a parliament the other day, I look at the people them inside it, you know, and it reminds me of the Roman, the, 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 the way they call them, the, 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 the forum in a room when them used to sit and design and create laws and do all sorts of things. We're going to come back to it. We're going to come back to this argument. We're going to come back to it. But meanwhile, again, look for your computer and look who for Thomas Jennings, who for picture you see there. It's Thomas Jennings' picture you see. It's not Paul Bogle. Click it. Okay, so we have go back now to... <laughs> this is the last league, right? All right. IRFM now brings you the live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Trash Tribute Concert at the Peter Tash Museum, Paul's headquarters in Kingston. Over to DJ Amber. Yes, mama. Hey, what's up, Mota? I know it would be much better if you were seeing me, not true. And that's why you feel the way you feel. You listen, you listen to me that about a while ago? Me, yes, me hear you. <laughs> say, say the picture of Paul Bogle is another man named Thomas Jefferson. Thomas, sorry, Thomas yes. Jennings. Not Thomas Jefferson. Wow. Thomas Jennings. You never hear me well, say? Not a, the, yes, the more you talk, the more famous you get. 
Why are you saying that? <laughs> because you tell people these shocking things. Wait, you I'm going to go on and look. You see Tama Jennings? No. No, because I was preparing for the link, I never All did, right, but well, I am gonna. Go your computer and put in yes. Thomas Jennings' picture and see who for picture come up. And Thomas Jennings' picture come up. Why oh, you shot me right now? To motor. everybody in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Just like the picture of Jesus Christ, where it's our head. For how much years now? Oh, God. Nobody got us some motor. Nobody got us some motor. Why you think we stick for Peter Tosh? Why you think we mention Thomas Jennings? <laughs> Because wow. the world doesn't know, say, it has been very unfair to it if we don't True, really man. understand where them do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because we can That's do it to right. them, you know, and we do the time of Jenny to them, you know. They don't know how we do it to them. They know how we do it, but we don't have to All right, Mota, thank you so much for sharing that information. I am definitely going to look at the picture as soon as we done work. Right, right now, I have here with me, um, in this last link, I have three very special guests. First up, I have Mr. Fully Fullwood and his bass player for the Word Sound and Power Band, Peter Tosh's band. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and greetings. Yes, glad to yeah. have you. Today is Peter's birthday. It's happy. It's good to have you here. You being one of the, the members who traveled with him all over the world playing music. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, and it's birthday too. Very important. Very important for me. Personally. All right. Tell me one of the best um, things you would say about Peter Tosh was. Well, there is so much. But, you know, I remember one story that we were at some place playing. And we, um, before we go on stage, a lady came and said she wanted to do a, something with, uh, with Peter. But she was afraid. Mm-hmm. I said, what are you afraid of? She said, well, him looks so serious. I said, no, man. So I go inside and I said, Bush, the lady want to talk to you. And he said, yeah, man, bring her come. I'm a girl said, I said, come in. And I went out back. And long after she come back around smiling and said, boy, I'm such a nice man. I said, well, see, don't be afraid. So, so it was down to said, earth? Yeah. All right, wonderful. Yeah, Saturday night, you're going to perform with the band. Um, right. it, after a while, you know, the band has now reunited. Yes, yes. Well, it's, it's going to be one of those emotional feelings for me personally because I mean you know I travel so much and Peter is one of the best for me personally the best band leader that I ever have one of the nicest treat me with the utmost respect so every time I you know when I'm playing some of his music it's something that very emotional to me because the way that you lived yes you Aye. know so it touches me so again love him very much you know so i know we'll meet sometimes you know all right <laughs> yeah. thank you so much and all the best on the show yes. i know you're doing going to do good thank you thank all you right. very much yeah one love all right, so that was the bass player for the Word Sound Power Band, Mr. Fully Fullwood. And joining me right now, I have artist manager and former manager of Peter Tosh and, and a lot of other things behind him name, what we can't get into right now. How you doing, Mr. Copeland Forbes? Boy, it's a great honor to be here again to celebrate this great milestone, you know. And this one is a special one, you know, because um, within the band, we have with us this time Santa Davis, who was at there the fatal night with Peter and still carried the bullet in his shoulder until this very day, you know. And Donald Kinsey, the lead guitarist, who was there with Peter and was there with Bob when Bob got shot too. So we have two very important people in the band that's going to be playing. Santa was coming with me, but he's now down the road doing a TV show. All right. Just like I asked fully, tell me one of the things that you can remember that was a great thing about Peter. Because I know there's many, but we don't have enough time. I use yeah, that with one of my memories. Time, but you know something, I won't put it in a nutshell. Yeah. The greatest moment with me and Peter is when just both of us together went to Africa for the first time and we spent four weeks in the mountain of Benin. And that was one of the greatest experiences I've ever experienced in my life. I learned so much about our culture. It helped me to understand uh, who we are. And until this very day is something that will never, ever leave my mind. The African experience with Peter Tosh. Wow, that was really a nutshell. And we can imagine what that was like. So Saturday night is the big show. Tell the people why they need to come out. Well... Saturday night is going to be one of the greatest nights in music because as we know Peter music means a lot to every single one 
we have some surprises um and everybody i just finished the rehearsal and everybody is on tip-top shape right and you're getting the real stuff because these are all the musicians that played and tour with peter over the 30 years they have just come back together since last year after 35 years wow. and um everybody's excited everybody's revved up and it's going to be a night to remember and it's an event that no one should miss all right thank you so much representing very well for peter tosh mr copeland forbes thank you enjoy it's such a night for me and you okay <laughs> to miss is to this Aye. all right <laughs> and we're gonna close out right now with our very good friend um we have here at post we have mr cooper who i spoke to first so the first shall be last and the last shall be first how's the day going so far how, how do you feel about the launch it went very well, and it's been a pleasure having IRFM here and having you here. And, um, you know, we've had so many people passing through and, and um, contributing in terms of giving their experiences with Peter and talking about the event. So it's, it's been, and the music has been fabulous as well. So it's just been wonderful. All right, thanks to Smurf for the music. Really doing a good job, and the people, you know, basically getting in spirit because it's spiritual music Peter did. All right, I just asked Copeland to tell the people why they should come out. We know it's going to be a big night for you. Just want to wish you all the best for Saturday night. Tomorrow is the symposium at UWE, and then Sunday the road trip. It's quite a lot, and I know it's going to be fun. Thank you very much. It, is, it means a lot, and it means the cementing of Peter's legacy. Yeah, there's been so much about Peter Tash and, and what was so special, what made him the iconic personality that he has been and the influence he has been globally. And so since last year, it's been our pleasure to be able to have this resurgence and to, and to work on that cementing of his legacy. And we won't stop because this has the potential to stretch across the globe. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mr. Kingsley Cooper. All the best. All right. So this is my last link. Like I said, people, don't forget, it's half price on the museum all the way to Sunday, right, Mr. Saturday, Cooper? Saturday. To Saturday, he says. All right. So it's Peter Tosh's birthday celebrations launching here this evening at Pulse 8. Come on out and still be a part of it. Then tomorrow, the symposium, Saturday, the uh, music show or the live show here at Pulse. And then on Sunday, the road trip to Belmont. Anyone can go on down to the Peter Tosh Mausoleum for that one. So it's his birthday. All the lovers of Peter touch music go on out and celebrate happy birthday also to marlene brown who's here and she was someone who she is someone who was very close to peter touch shared the same birthday as peter touch lovely lady isis miller is here too by the way Mota, your sister and she is our birthday as well, well and of course um today. yes isis birthday to them i never realized either so big her up she's here enjoying herself and we got my virgin power at white river is his birthday to oh, her birthday to the Mota. But you know, Smurf, they here play some music. We have Ricky and we have Irving. I want to thank them so much for the technical support to the entire team as well for making this possible. All the Peter Tosh music lovers, this is your weekend. Don't miss it. Your ear with Copeland said to miss is to this. All right, Mota, I'm out. My name is Amber. Thank Bless you so much it. for the time. All right. Yes. That was a live outside broadcast from the launch of the Peter Tosh tribute concert at the Peter Tosh Museum. Post headquarters in Kingston. Remember, Saturday is a big concert. You understand? Big, big concert Saturday. Trafalgar Road, that is where the, the, the headquarters, that is where the museum is. Okay. It is the stepping razor, the art of war. So, we are telling about Thomas Jennings and our history. When we say certain things, people feel, say, it's like, where we get them things there from? And we know, no care how conscious it is, if you think on Jesus physically, you think on a picture that was put there by a man named Michelangelo who paint him relative and give the world it as an image of Jesus Christ. And we are saying, if you feel say, that is not true, well, in our modern day, you know, I'm going to show you something where it's not true. And what is not true? The image that you have in your head of Paul Bogle is not Paul Bogle. It's a man who lived before Paul Bogle from 1790 and dead in Ban. Him named Thomas Jennings. A dry cleaning man in America. So, we just have said that history sometimes is written for the person who want to put something across on you. Yes. And I can tell you about the picture too of Nanny. I 
I can't tell you about the picture of Nanny too. But I don't want to scare Jamaica too much. <laughs> I don't want to scare you scare too much. Cause I look like, call me, and they might tell me to Parliament again. And I'm not going back. I'm not going to the dear back. I'm not going to the dear back. Unless I can go in there to address the Queen. That is how I will go in. If I cannot, if I if I'm invited to go back to address the Queen, I will proudly go back there. But given what I saw and experienced the other day, no sir, I would have preferred go to a Vibes Cartel concert <laughs> than go there and go back there. Trust me. Yes. All right. This is really strange now. I could tell you about something else now. Where they pan the lips of everyone in America and right now. Man, it's like. You have some man where I kneel down when the anthem are play in America. By the way, you see the clip with, 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 um, with Donald Trump. Where Donald Trump said, well, he's been to Puerto Rico. And he has met the mayor in Puerto Rico. And he has met the, the, the president of the Virgin Islands. I mean, I say, he is the president of the Virgin Island. <laughs> he is the president of the Virgin Island. Donald Trump is a sample. <laughs> Donald Trump said he went to the Virgin Island, the U.S. Virgin Island, and met with the president. Donald Trump is the president of the Virgin Islands. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. I tell you, yeah. So some man decides to them now nah, stand up for the anthem, you know. I'm still, I'm still I feel, I don't mean, want disrespect to our national anthem, but I still I feel that them shouldn't, you shouldn't go a movie, theater, and have to stand up when the movie has started by them play the national anthem. You go a theater for theater, you know. You don't go a theater for go hear national. That not making no difference to so the respect or whatever. What it does, it makes you feel annoyed. And I personally am very annoyed when I go to movies and, and people have to stand up for that. And if you don't stand up, everybody will look at you like, yeah, you know? Respect. Yeah, like, you know, respect. Because you don't stand up. There's time and place for everything. The theater house is not a place to play the national anthem before the movie. What kind of madness? It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's just foolishness. Anyway, the American national anthem, them call it the Star Spangled Banner. No. A whole heap of Americans, including Native Americans, including black people, stand up and recite the Star Spangled Banner. I want to read a verse out of the Star Spangled Banner and see if it's something that we as black people should have respect. Because the whole, it, it never started, it, it, wasn't, it, 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 it wasn't meant to be an anthem, a national anthem, you know. It's like out of many one people. You think a Jamaican can get that? American and matter that. Out of many one is an American matter, you know. It's not, I don't know how the people them in a Jamaica who say them is father love America, so you know, Rasta. That them take everything from a, <laughs> they love a fall book. <laughs> them have Tamar Jedan's, Jedan's, Jedan's picture up there. But I don't, <laughs> young, young, vex, young, young, vex. Eh? Is ignorance of this, young young. We shouldn't tell you that. <laughs> you shouldn't tell you that. Young young, big city. That's going to reveal that. Anyway, the the, the Jamaican anthem is an anthem of prayer. It's like a prayer. It, it's solemn. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, mean, I agree with the wisdom from above. Because I have common sense. I may have sense. No, I know. So wisdom not come from above. Wisdom come through experience in life. That's how you get wisdom. You understand? Knowledge come through learning. Wisdom come through experience. Anyway, the, the, the Star Spangled Banner was not written to be an anthem, but it became an anthem. And I'm going to read verses from, a verse from, the, from the Star Spangled Banner and hear what it says. I'm going to start at, and where is that band who saw Vaughn Kingley? Swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. 
No refuge could save the islands and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner in triumph do it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. What we have a contention with here is that it is gloating over that no island and slave must escape from the gloom of the grave. In other words, kill them. They must escape from the grave. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the islands and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner in triumph do it wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is something that has been regurgitated in the consciousness of people all over America, including black people, who four parents experienced slavery. And the anthem that they must respect is saying that we must not let them escape. Kill them, those slaves. Kill them. They must not escape the flight of the gloom of the grave. And then they wonder why the people them say them now nah stand up. Because look upon the atrocities we are going on in America for a first world country. Every major killing by a police in America, the police get away. When a police is the weirdest thing, you know. Like, all right, you see the man where shoot up the place that day in Las Vegas. Them still can't connect him to no terrorist group, you know. But them don't want to say that terror is a terror attack, you know. Because if it was a brown man or a black man, it's like it's a terror attack, right? But him is not a terrorist. Him is just a madman where I shoot up the place. So they have to get psychiatric evaluation to find out what him was eating, drinking, smelling, or tasting to find out why him do these things. If it's a black man, you know, say them start to trace all him, 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 him ancestry 5,000 years. All right. So, when a police, and this is very serious, you know, when a police kill a black man in America, them start to investigate the past of the black man. The police kill the black man, you know, but the black man will get investigated and say, well, him, you know, him did have a problem when he was a child, and him get abused this, and you know, him was a criminal, and him did rob some place five, six years ago, and them thing there. You see, if the gunman... If the black man kill the police or kill a white man, you think they have a talk about the, the, the hey, it's a terrible place, you know? America wants a terrible place, man. The black man killed the white man. And the black man got a prison immediately. Him wicked, terrible. The white man killed the black man. They must investigate the black man. You don't see it? Because them say the reason why the police kill the black man, you know, it's because of a mother, mother, father, sister, uncle, brother, cousin, nephew, girlfriend did involve in something from the time there. The, the, the police never involved in a lot, you know, more than him was, him, 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 him did feel like him was under, you know, threat. He was under threat. You saw the place here? Yeah? Terrible place, you know. So, we really have to examine the, nat the, the national anthem. Because we have out of many one as our motto. And them is for them own. It's for them motto. Out of many one is an American thing. Me hear Obama get up and say it. And repeat the out of many one. The American motto. And repeat it. And the spy spangled banner that tell you say. Slaves. Carry them to them grave. Don't make one of them escape. Mm -hmm. You understand? Not one of them must escape. So, me don't know if we are make trouble. Me don't know if we are make trouble. What is the purpose of these exercises? It's to show you how history set and things that we really feel say is the reality and the truth of these things. We have to investigate it and rewrite it. Just like how oh, we see the parliament now rewrite history by saying these men is not criminals that 
if people wonder why is it necessary and important, it is necessary and important based so far for the, all the things them that I have just brought forward. The Thomas Jennings picture, the Jesus picture, all of these things connected. The Star Spangled Banner, all of them connected. The British thing where you pass your, your, your citizenship, if you belong to the British command, where you don't have a citizenship, you can't do anything you want to do in terms of parliamentary and this and this and that, and you can't go there. All of them things they connected. It connected to the slave master. The slave master. And I tell you, say, really and truly, the slave mill is grinding still. But even though it's a grind, slow. All right, I think they're full of everybody belly too much today. <laughs> Billy fool today, <laughs> believe you be. Here we go. We are, we are, you know, all the ones them who stay with me. We want you up the fluffy diva outside. The operator. Chevane. Eh? Just sound like a, 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 a champagne. Mm -hmm. A wine, Chevane, you know? Chevane wine, you know. I want yes. Fat, fat, fat diva. I said fat. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I never said fat. I did not say that. Fluffy. Mm -hmm. Fluffy diva. Chevane. Oh my gosh, man. You just gone. You know that way there. We want you love young, young. Who they are with me. Right through. Not an inch. We want you love Sanjay. We want you love, um, I mean, I forget her name. You saw me easy to forget people. Shamara, Shamara, they wrote me less and less now, you know, I notice it. But I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing, you know. Okay. Why oh, yell up? Who is my yell up? Neil. Neil. Why oh, yell up, Neil? Neil. Yell, Neil. Yes, I see you, I see you, I see you. All right, you don't have to come out, you don't have to come out. Yeah, man. Just wear your foot, man. I don't know. Yes. Why oh, yell up, me hungry? Why oh, yell up, everyone? Who listen to the program.